the tracks of stuff off as possible, but I put Creighton stickers on it. I do like the carousel though with all the different oils. These are shock oils. And then I put my diff lube oil, also a Traxxas kit, on the wall here. I like that. Uh, question. This thing. It comes off super easy. But I, I don't want to zip tie it because then that's going to mess up the look. So I'm not sure if I'm going to super glue it. But I don't know if super glue will work against this aluminum and steel. Or if it will hold tightly because if you have that on there and you're running the truck i mean just the slightest little bump like that will make this thing fly off all right to work but anyway i just wanted to show you guys this i i really like my i really like the tires and the truck and i really appreciate you guys supporting me and helping me out um thank you On a side note, my body's done and I thought I would show it to you guys. Truck and everything. It looks pretty bomb. I like it. it. Looks good. Got these skid plates on it. Hopefully it will I even put some on the front here. Hopefully it'll protect the truck for a little while. But it looks good. I liking it. Alright what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so today we're going to talk about camber now the first thing that you need to actually do this correctly is get a camber gauge rpm makes a 1 8 scale and a 1 10 scale camber gauge and they're only like 12 bucks so i highly recommend that you get one it's very important if you want your car to go straight and be straight and corner correctly then you definitely need a gauge and you need to know how to use one now the best way to do this is where you put the batteries in it you put all the tires on it and you set the car on a flat surface preferably the ground you turn the car on and then you set the gauge up to the tire like this can you see that see how the gauge is there's your tire you take the gauge and you set it right up to your tire and then it gives you a measurement i've never been really one to do that i've always just set the car up like normal and then as long as this part of the gauge it is completely flush you can't have no you can't have any space between it sometimes if you take a flashlight run a flashlight through the back of it it will tell you whether or not if your gauge is completely flat against it so let's just say that our gauge let's see here let's let's get it right i want it perfect there it is okay so right now i am reading right now i am reading one two three a little over three almost four degrees negative of camber that's not exactly what i want um, I'm more of a straight rind runner, meaning I have a lot of road to run up and down. So I'll be doing a lot of straight running, not so much cornering. So cornering would be really good for this setup. You want the tires to be kind of jacked in when you're doing cornering. So that way, when you turn them, the front nose of the car will dive into the turn now the only problem with that setup is that the back tires will then break loose and slide away you don't want that you also don't want that negative in the back see this gauge works for the front and the back it's very important when you have a lot let's say well i wouldn't say a lot let's say you don't have much negative you actually have positive which means that instead of the tire being straight 
you have positive meaning that it, it's like this. It, it's pointed outward. That's not good. You don't want that. I can actually see that my back tire here on this side, the bottom of it is pointing down. It's actually like this. That's not good. That's not what I want. I want that to be completely leveled. I'm actually looking for either zero degrees out of the back or one degrees. I want very minimum on the back. Now you can, I can see it clear as day. Damn, this back tire, this back tire is straight up and down. It's probably at a one or a zero. I bet it's probably at a one. This one right here is more like at a positive one. So that's why it's going out. Uh, right? Yeah, camber. Camber goes this way. And then, what is it? Caster. I think your caster is when it tilts and leans forward. Which we won't worry about that so much. But anyway. Or, blah, blah, blah. On the front, you need to start with one to three degrees of negative camber for added traction during cornering. Normal starting camber angles for the rear tire is also between one and three degrees of negative camber. This prevents the outside edge of the tire from rolling under the cornering, which prevents a loss of traction. All right, too much negative camber will cause traction loss on straightaways. You really want to prevent this, okay? The loss of traction would be because you have too much negative camber. And this will also cause the, re that's like the main reason why it's because of the loss of camber. That's what I was talking about. If your tires too much, especially your back tires, if they're like too much one way, it's not a good thing. Ideally, you want your back tires to be at one degree negative camber, and then you want your fronts to be at a two degree or maybe it depends on what kind of track you're running on. If you're just backyard bashing, then you definitely want your back tires to be at a one degree negative camber and you want your front tires, depending on what kind of vehicle you have. I have a big one eight scale truck, so I'm gonna go with two degrees. Let's say you have a car, like a sedan, a four wheel drive car. Um, you're probably gonna to wanna to be right at zero I would probably put it at zero and you're back to, it just depends, you gotta see. If you, the best way to know guys is when you go in a turn, does the back end of your car slide around? Or does it stay stiff and your front tires turn and your car just keeps going straight? If your tires are turning and your car's still going straight, then you're binding the car up. And that's not what you want. That means that your back end isn't lo isn't isn't talking to your front end. The best way to do it is that you want that front end to hit the turn, right? And you want those back tires to follow you right through that turn with a little bit of roll. Too much roll will cause it to like come out the turn like this. You don't want that. You want to come into that turn enter it smoothly and exit it smoothly and that is why what i'm talking about here is extremely important so all right back to what we were uh talking about now assuming like let's talk about sedans right i mentioned sedans one degree of negative camber should come most circumstances, okay? So that's what I was saying. I was saying zero degree to one degree on sedans should be all you want. Seriously, you want as much as the tire touching the surface as possible when you're in a four wheel drive car, okay? All vehicles except monster trucks though, monster trucks kind of mimic the front end settings as a starting point. So, you look at your front here and you want to basically line it up. Like I was saying earlier, you want this arm to line up with that, to line up with that. One crate, one straight shot, boom, straight shot. And then same for the other side. You want it to line up. You see how mine is not lined up? It's actually like over here a little. See, look, if I corrected it, now it's straight. That's how I want it to be. But if you got to get one straight, so this one is completely straight, all right? 
Now see this one is not completely straight so I need to adjust this to where that is now completely straight. That right there will get your car running straight just period, all right? I know I'm kind of jumping around anywhere. All right, so we're at, all right, see I need to readjust it. This is, this one right here is a little bit, no, it ain't this one. Look at the spacing. See how much space is between that and then how much space is between this one? So I need to take it out of this one instead of taking it out of this one because you want as much as thread biting that as possible. So don't just adjust one side, adjust both sides. 